Hi, welcome to Polarity Analysis. This is a tutorial of the program. I will um, walk you through all the options that the program has, show you all the buttons and so you can operate it safely. And it's not an introduction to the Polarity Analysis method. We um, will do this in a second video. Um, so let's um, get started. So when you go to the Polarity Analysis um, webpage, um, you need to sign up for the software. Um, please um, put in your name and your email correctly and please choose a password that you can use on later. You can also choose your language and um, if you want to change any of these you can do this later also in the program. So I have already sent, signed up so I'm gonna log in right away. Um, you can always click here I already have an account after registration process or you can log in here either way is fine. Um, so um, let's do that. So that's me. Um, if Before you log in and whatever, please make sure that you use a browser that we support. Uh, you can work with Firefox and you can work with Chrome and um, Internet Explorer and Edge do not work. So let's get going here. Um, so this is me. Okay, so you might have noticed um, there is nothing you can download or install in this program. Uh, Polarity Analysis runs directly in your browser, so don't look for any download options. Install, um, it just works right here. So this is what you um, first see when you open the, um, the program and it looks pretty empty. So we want to get started. Um, let me get first, before we create here patients and analysis, let me just show you here on the top right. This is um, where you find everything that's um, pertaining to your user. So you can log out, you can change the settings where you can change your name, you can change the language, you can look at your license. There is some documentation here um, and you can also contact uh, the support and we are happy to help you with any questions you have or problems or suggestions. And then you find some licensing information and you want to subscribe or provide a program, you can do it also here. So that's just like an important drop down. So let's get going. So when you um, start first, then you need to create a patient. And let's do this here. So the basic layout is always like this, that you have a patient list on the left and anything you want to do to the patients is on the right. So we want to do this now. Let's start, start um, create one patient. For instance, I call her Carla uh, Smith. And she's a patient since today. I can add a um, date of birth if I want to, for instance, and just put something in there. Um, the category is important if you want to, and I ever use this, um, if you want to use it for a search, so you can have different patients categories. And if you use later on the search, it will just show up with that category. You can also put any notes um, that you want to put in uh, for your patient, for instance, why I came here or any relationships. Um, yeah, we have. Some, um, if you have concerns about um, any security, if you want to, don't want to put your um, data here of your patients. Um, some, um, some users prefer just to go and say, I, I don't want to show the full name of my patients. I'm okay with caller S, so there is no personal identifiable information on the web. You're welcome to do so. Um, so I, for now, I just leave it here. So, and that's helpful. So we have a patient. So it's now on the left and you want to select it and so it's there. Let's just create another one. We have a little bit more. So let's just grab in whatever um, um, Miller. So, and this is another patient. Let's just see that. So we have two. So, um, so Carla Smith comes in and um, so we want to do a polarity analysis for her. So what we want to start is we have a new consultation for her. So you can see that also here. And the consultation is just a patient visit and he comes in your practice and um, you want to do that. So um, so you have you have that and you can put some minimum information in there. Let's let's say Carla comes because she has some acute conditions at some some bronchitis. Um, some bronchitis and you later on you can add a um, prescription or an outcome of the analysis or just um, any information you want. So this is the consultation when it starts and now we can go and um, basically perform a polarity analysis on that consultation for that patient. Let me click here and let's do that. So that brings you to a new window. 
So what you see here is our, what we call the analysis window. And it has basically two sections. One is the left where you can input all the symptoms and on the right side where you see the analysis. At the end of the day, when you're done with your analysis, you can uh, save and return and you come basically back to your, to your patient and then the analysis will be completed. So let's go back in. The analysis window has two sides. On the left side, you can basically select a symptom and on the right side, there's the analysis. So the mechanism is uh, when, you, when you click, for instance, here on a symptom, it will, um, will show up on the right and then give some analysis results and you can also remove it. But let's not go there yet. Let me just explain what all the symptoms are and what, what all the colors mean. So we have um, three different ways of inputting symptoms. One is with a symptom list and you can go and um, there are about 2,200 different symptoms here and you can go through all of these and you can search for them. The other one is you can go through a checklist and this is a reduced number of symptoms that are the most important ones. And you can just make your selection from here from an intake. And the third one is that's specific to HDHD. That's another reduced list and we don't um, touch this today, but that's for a different topic. So let's go back to the, um, to this, um, symptoms to symptoms list and I'm going to explain first um, what all the numbers and colors mean and uh, that you um, can navigate this safely. So we have um, 135 remedies um, in the in the program and the, and the remedies are here on the top right and you can basically can see them all if you click here to the right and there's nothing in there now below but it's just like for um, to to find out what those are and so these 135 remedies is our um, total corpus. Then um, the numbers here that are associated with the, um, that are showing up on the left side, for instance, 123, show exactly the numbers of remedies that are associated with this, um, with the symptoms. In this case, it would be 123. And in this case, it would be only six. So this is what the numbers mean. So they have nothing to do with the symptom number. Then um, we have some color coding and the color coding um, tells us how reliable a symptom is. Yes. We have the colors um, um, green for high, um, yellow, medium, and low for red. And you see they're all um, different different colors here. And um, the, the um, association with the colors has been done manually. So um, from, from experience and from, from, from daily practice and, and, and practices, we know what works best and also what um, can be best communicated to a patient and um, best um, understood from a patient and this get more green or um, the ones that have very, very few remedies assigned like the twilight here with only two. These are naturally also low because we don't have a lot of support um, for this for this um, symptom. And in general, we want to use only the, um, the most reliable ones, the green ones, or if you need the yellow ones. And if there's like a specific case, maybe you say, oh, I don't really know. So then we might want to add a red one too. Um, this um, labels up here are also buttons. So you can actually select and say, I want to see only the green ones. That's helpful. Or in this case, you want to see the, um, the yellow ones and the green ones. And in this case, you can go back to all of the symptoms. So we want to use only the symptoms with the highest reliability if possible. Then at the end of each row, the symptoms sometimes have a little P. And this little P means that this is a polar symptom. And a polar symptom has always like an opposite. So if I click on the symptom here, it will show up two times on the right. It will show up with this um, with the actual condition we are looking for, but also with an opposite. Let me just do this again, just for in, um, for reference. Oh yes, and then you will also see that um, in general the polar symptoms have also this little, um, a little um, smaller or bigger mark at the beginning. And so that's an easy way to find out. And you can basically, let me just remove this again. You can basically search for symptoms that only make it better or symptoms that make it only worse like this. The search is very powerful because it looks for all kinds of syllables. So you look, for instance, like a condition where it gets worse in some weather and it's cold. So you get quickly, um, even with little short syllables to your search result. And then you can pick what you, um, what you think it's important here to put in the analysis. Um, I think that's all from the 
checklist I have to show you. Yeah, and you can always um, clear this again. Um, so, and then let's go to the next input method. That's the checklist. I think that's the most common you're going to use. And we find the same things here again. It's just a reduced list. And so let me just pick one like the desire for open air here. And you, I will show you that it's exactly the same one. So this desire for open air. And if I go to the checklist, it's already checked, right? So I can basically take that out again or put it back in again. And it's, it's the same input mechanism. So what I put in the left will show up on the right. And it doesn't matter if you have it here or select it from here, right? So you can select it basically here and it will show up here if it's in that list too. So um, let's take a little intake here and just like for Carla Smith and her bronchitis and see how that would look like. Um, let's say Carla has a... Um, has a has a has a problem and we ask her and she said oh my breathing is not really doing right so we want to look at the specific things with here with um, breathing and you say okay it's really um, the breathing's quickened and uh, it, it, it aggravates when I when I breathe out and I have some other issues for instance um, I'm always thirsty so it might be something that um, that I have a desire to drink so what you see here is that when I click on the symptoms on the left, they will show up on the right. Let me take that thirst out again. So, and they, the symptoms that show up on the right, they will um, add up here, the gradings to different, um, to different results. So we, for instance, for instance here, see for instance here that there is two symptoms here. So we have, this one has two hits. The sum of the gradings is seven, and then we have a polar difference. And in general, we will want to look for um, remit, uh, for results that have the highest polar difference, if possible, and also the highest number of hits. What you see at the bottom here is basically the, the opposite symptoms. And there's also no way to remove these, right? Because if you remove one of these here, then this one will go away too, because they just come in pairs. So there's no way to just to remove one of these. So let's um, add some more symptoms that we get a little bit more things. And so um, in, in, in general, the, the most um, remedy that we want to recommend is always on the left. This is why we show only here like 10 symptoms. And we don't need more. Um, if you want to go to the right, you can find out more what happened. Now, right now, it's not so interesting because all of them have two hits and they're very close together. So we need some more symptoms to make it the signal more clear. So let me put in the th this thirst again. What we see here now has happened that there is a contraindication and the contraindications are indicated in gray. And these are the remedies that will not work because the opposite symptom has a stronger grading than the um, the symptoms we put in. So we want to exclude in this, in this case um, sepia and pulsatilla. And the others are still in the race. Then um, let's say there's an, another thing that um, um, it gets better when, when, when you do cold water, for instance, it could be, right? Or um, it gets in general worse during eating, could be, right? So let's just see um, eating, during eating gets worse. So we have a couple symptoms in here. and. I'll just let it like this because we want to look at the analysis. So in this case, what happened is that, for instance, now we have a lot of remedies that like um, that have five hits because we have five symptoms here, but the sum here is 12 and it's 15, so they're various sums and it's still a little difficult to judge with five symptoms, but the polarity difference here is really high. And you can actually look at this when you just click here and sort it in different ways and you see that this is the, has the highest sums and also the highest polarity difference. Or you can also sort it by polarity difference directly. So in this case, um, causticum has the um, highest number of hits and it has also the highest polarity difference. And CPI is basically excluded because of the contraindication. So that would be the remedy of choice in this case. Um, sometimes it can happen on your screen, depending on your screen resolution, that you don't see this as nicely as here on this screen. And in this case, it, I really advise you if you want to zoom out a little bit with your, with your browser and you can make that a little smaller so that it, it looks um, still nice and you see both screens. Um, that's, that's certainly helpful. So let me just go back here to the um, original zoom. So I think that's, that's a good thing. So um, 
I think that's all we need here for this. Um, if you are interested in more remedies, on the left side, this is the button that can hide all the symptoms on the left, so you have a little bit more visibility. And so we can just toggle this here. Um, you can also export your, um, your as an Excel file. And when you do that, it will just download here in your browser right there. And so it's done and it will give you the name and everything. So done there. Um, at the end, when we're done with our analysis, um, we want to um, return and save it and automatically saves it. And then we have the result of the analysis here. And in this case, we remember Causticum was the, uh, has the, had the um, highest um, recommendation with the most hits and the, um, the highest sums and the highest difference. So that's our first choice and remedy. And this is the one we want to uh, recommend. And then there were several set of options um, like Carbonicum that we also could, could do. But in this case, we wanna, would go with um, Causticum. And I would say let's, that it would be our prescription, for instance. And you can just say let's, let's prescribe a Causticum 200C and then um, the patient is supposed to take that. So that's um, all we need um, to make an analysis. So let's just um, play a little bit more and let's just say what happens if the patient comes back after two weeks and we want to check again or maybe after a week and what happened, if it really has improved a uh, good condition or if it's still there. So we have several options. In this case, we can say, okay, um, there's a new consultation because the kind of patient comes back. We can open a new one and we can start a new polar analysis um, with the same, with the same, um, with a, with, a, with a different intake, right? And just to start a new checklist and ask the questions again. We could do this, so that's one option. We can also say, um, let's not do this and let's just um, delete this consultation because we don't want it anymore. We can duplicate the information here, this consultation, and um, use the one that we already had and say then, okay, um, this is bronchitis and let's say this is um, the visit number two. And um, let's do a different analysis, right, in this case, or prescribe something different, and then we can rework and use the old analysis again and say maybe this was not the right symptom, and let's go back and let's add something else that was right, I mean, for instance, like this, and we would maybe end up with a different um, um, different um, remedy, like, uh, depends, right? Let me just put in something and so over here with that company come. And then we could save and return again, we would have a different result and then um, prescribe that, for instance. I think that's all you have to know. Um, the patients in general, um, you can always go back to your patients, right? And we had nothing for Ben Miller yet, but for Carla, it will always show up like this when you log in again. So the patient information is um, retained. Um, you certainly can delete a patient, which we don't want to do right now. And you can also go back and edit patient information anytime. Which I don't want to do that right now. You can delete um, your consultations, and I think these are all the options. And when a new patient comes in, you can add a new one, and you can search certainly for any patients if you have a really long list, and then it will just search for your patient. I think that's all you need to know to uh, do good analysis. And um, in the second video, we will show you more about um, how, what exactly the, how the calculations work inside of the analysis window. Thank you very much and have a um, lot of fun and success with the program.